Hi, this is Dr. Janik Ram, Royal Pearl Hospital, India. You're going to see a case of total parotidectomy. 50-year-old male, present with history of swelling in the cheek. He was on a prolonged course of antibiotics. The plan was to do a total parotidectomy by a retrograde technique because he had a stone which is around 2 centimeters in size and it was in the proximal part of the duct and he had severe inflammation and the challenge was to preserve the seventh nerve because of the inflammation in the gland. Something about the anatomy of the facial nerve. The facial nerve exits from the stylomastoid foramen and divides into two branches, the zygomatic or temporal and the cervical facial. This forms the pest and serenus. You can see the branches here, the temporal, the zygomatic, the upper and the lower buccal nerves, the mandibular and the cervical branch. Now we have two different techniques to do peritidectomy, the anti-grade and the retrograde technique. The anti-grade uses the tragal cartilage as a pointer, the temporal mastoid suture line and the posterior belly of digastric. Whereas we use the retrograde technique and there are two important nerves we usually identify the buccal branch and the zygomatic branch. The buccal branch usually runs one finger breadth just above the lower border of the angle of the mandible and that is what we identify early and the advantage in retrograde technique is that quickly we identify the facial nerve. That is the modified Bly's incision here the swelling was very large and so we had to use a slightly larger incision Care is taken not to make the incision over the mastoid very acute and that is the vertical part limb of the incision being made. Once the incision is made we use unipolar cautery to elevate the skin flap as you can see here. It's by the principle of traction and counter traction that we elevate the flap. You can see that elevation is almost bloodless. In the cervical part, we identify the platysma as you can see here and we cut the platysma as you can see and we elevate it superiorly. This resection is almost bloodless because you're going above the level of the parotid gland. Elevation is very gentle and it should be along the uh, this is the posterior elevation where you elevate along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and here we also identify the lower pole and then you have to fix the flaps with the rubber band the next point is to identify the greater auricular nerve as you can see here that's the greater auricular nerve which is being identified and once you identify that, we go in for identification of the facial nerve. We palpate the lower border of the mandible and one finger breadth above. We keep our finger there and we switch over to the microscope. You can already see the facial plane. That's called the patty's facial venous plane. Every branch is accompanied by a small vein. And now we shift to the microscope. I usually stand and operate seeing the microscope and you can see the branches very clearly. So the recording is through the external camera when we see it through the microscope you can see it very brilliantly that's the facial nerve already identified it takes hardly a few minutes to identify the first branch like because it. it's superficial there and the technique of dissection is once you identify it you see how we see it through the microscope we use an artery forceps phasing upwards and we go around the gland and you can do a complete one in single piece resection of the gland in the retrograde technique. So you can see here that the nerve has been traced. We are tracing it further down. At one stage it starts dipping down and you can see that this is the stage where it starts dipping down into a deeper plane. You can see we are using a scissors but pointed upwards. So basically when you are operating all your instruments should be pointing upwards. And it should never be pointing below. Now you can see that the main trunk of the facial nerve has been identified there and you can see the upper the zygomatic or temporal branch again being dissected very beautifully with a curved artery forceps directed upwards 
a lot of inflammation. So it was very difficult to insert that artery forceps. So basically in an inflammatory disease, it's slightly more tougher to do a peridectomy than in a uh, case of neo, uh, neoplastic disease like a pleomorphic adenoma, where it is very easy to do a peridectomy. Here you can see that we are using a, bi a unipolar, though this is done far away from the nerve. And once we visualize it through the microscope, we will see that very clearly. And you can see very beautifully that every branch has been traced. You can see the uh, cervical facial, zygomatical temporal, and we will trace it right till its uh, um, supply. And now once we do that, we are going to now take off the gland in one piece, which you are going to see. And that is where we will now insert our artery forceps. This is the same kind of dissection. So what we do is identify a branch and then you can see that we use an artery forceps directed upwards and that's the gland being removed in total. In this case, I'm actually, this is actually the final view which you get. You get all the branches of the facial nerve, of course, the superficial lobe has been removed. In this case, we did something very, very new. I think the first time maybe in the world. Uh, we introduced the endoscope through the duct and something like the silent endoscope we did through the duct, which is very dilated. You can see now that that is a duct. You can see that. And now we are putting our endoscope inside and you can see the stone there. This was something very new in this particular case and that is why we thought we will post this case. So you can see that this was the stone you see the granulation tissue uh, which is there so it was a very huge stone so we decided to take that stone and then to transfix the duct so you can see here a brilliant view through the endoscope I think this is the first time we were using an endoscope like you can see the pus coming out that's the huge stone there more than 2.5 centimeters in size and uh, that was completely removed and once we did that, we had to do a total peridectomy and uh, that is mandatory for inflammatory lesions. So we're going between the branches of the facial nerve to remove all the pieces of the gland. And once we do that, we're going to show you the endoscopic final appearance. You can see the branches there. This is the final view, fantastic view of the uh, uh, two divisions. Thank you very much for watching this video.